Hello my YouTube family. We're back revisiting the bench and today I'm going to teach you how to bench 500 pounds or at least get the foundation down for you to be able to do that. I'm here with my good friend Ali. What's up, what's up? We here. We're, we're going to go over the basics of our technique so we can build that foundation and start adding weight to the bar, all right? We're going to break it down from wrist to feet. So. Starting first with our wrist position. Ellie, how do you normal, normally grab the bar? I usually put my pinkies on the ring. All right, good. And I bring it forward, I lay down, then I try to line it up, not on my forehead, but like kind of under. If you got a big forehead, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I usually try to get my shoulders in line in with the bench. Perfect. One big brace, hit my feet. All right, before you lift it off, we're just gonna go over this wrist position. Okay. So the way we can determine how far up the bar is, right? If we're on a combo rack or anything, sometimes we, we could put the bar up even higher. That might not be a good position. So how do we determine whether we can find a good position? What I like my athletes to do is let go. Put your hands up, straight. Find your position where you would normally line up on the bar and you should be able to clear that bar with your wrist, right? He's not really able to clear it with his wrist. His wrist is getting hit by the bar. Now that's at 11. If we go visit this guy over here at 10 on this combo rack, now see if he can clear the bar. He can easily clear the bar. This is a nice way we can determine how far up the bar should be placed. Our wrist should be able to clear that bar. And this way, when we unrack it, we just have enough room where we we can unrack it without half pressing it or unlocking our shoulders when we go into that. All right, so then he also said he likes to line up his pinky with the ring. This allows him to have that wrist in line with the elbow throughout the entire range of motion. If your hands are too close, sometimes my elbows can flare. This is not gonna be a strong position. Go really close. Yeah, there you go, boom, boom. And I want you to go to like a half press position. On, on rack. Bring it out. And go to like, if you were benching about halfway. Bring it down. Have the elbow come out, so right. All right, let's take a look from the top. We took a view like this. I would be looking at his wrist right here. And his elbow is pointing, it's, it's not in line, right? It's not in a good stacked position. So if I move, hold this bar, he moves his pinky out a little bit more. Go to the ring, like he normally does. Now his wrist is stacked with the elbow. This is a nice, strong position. See how it's in one line there? Perfect. All right, you can rack the bar. So now that we got grip under, under control and we got the unracking process under control, let's address the shoulders and the back, okay? Now he has a very wide back, which is perfect for benching. But what do we do with the shoulder joints? If we pinch together, I have to relax. So I just want you to pinch my fingers. So this is just pinching my shoulder blades together. See, his shoulder blades actually come up a little bit, right? Because the rhomboids run like this. And if I pinch together, my shoulders are gonna come up. This is not a very strong position for my chest. Is this what you normally do? I usually here. Go, go like that. See how much yeah. his shoulder's rising up? What I'd rather have him do is think about mm. pressing down. Yes. So uh. think about almost, yes, yeah, squeezing right down here. This is your lower trap in your lat. This will stabilize that shoulder blade so we can get some range of motion out of the shoulder, which is okay for pressing. But not so much when I'm stuck up here in the traps, which is not gonna be a great position for pressing. So instead of thinking about shoulder blades together, think about shoulder blades down. Another thing you can think about is rolling the shoulder under these big old lats he has there. So that's what he's gonna do on the bench press. He's also doing what we say is a thoracic arch. See this section right here, his big old back? That's your thoracic region of your back. We wanna create an arch like this, a nice loop, okay? To help stick his chest up. Let's see what it looks like from the side. You can unrack the bar. Now we're gonna look at the shoulders from the side. So unrack the bar. Now what I want you to do is think about pinching your shoulder blades together. Pinch, pinch, pinch. All right, now relax that pinch and think about tucking. So you're tucking your shoulder blades under. There you go, getting up on that traps. 
he's gonna create more of that arch you see there, right? See that arch? That's what we want. Allows us to get our chest in a better pressing position, more like a decline instead of a flat. We're gonna be in a stronger position here, and we're gonna protect the shoulders a little bit more, okay? So this is what we're doing with the back. Now let's talk about what we're doing with the arms or our, our pressing movement pattern. So when I bring it down, go ahead, bring the bar down to touch the chest. Let's see if we can make that touch point here. All so right. bring the bar down, boom. The elbows, we don't want to over tuck the elbows. Go ahead and over tuck the elbows for me. Again, what this happens is my elbow is going to be over tucked and my wrist is not going to be in that strong position. It's not going to be stacked. Okay, so then go bring your back to about 45 degrees. If my arms, usually for most people, is at a 45 degree angle away, my elbow and my wrist are gonna be stacked on top of each other. So this way when I press, instead of it looking like this, it's like this. Instead of this, it's like this. A nice, strong position. So 45 degrees. All right, now I want you to press up. Nice. So when he presses, it's, our pec, our pec, the prime mover of the bench press, does a couple things. It moves horizontally, like this. Um, adduction horizontally, so it's bringing in, and it also internally rotates the shoulder, okay? So you can, you can rack the bar. So if I were to throw a punch, right? If I'm throwing a punch, I want to create a lot of power. If I were to throw the punch, I would not try to keep my elbow tucked as I, I throw that punch. I'm not gonna generate a lot of power. But if I internally rotate, if I allow my elbow to turn out, I can generate so much more force and pack that punch, okay? So when I'm pressing, it's the same thing on the bench press. When I push, I don't wanna keep my elbows tucked. It's gonna irritate my elbow, it could irritate my shoulder, I'm not gonna produce a lot of force. But if I have it slightly tucked at the bottom, that 45 degree angle, and as I press up, I'm gonna press back, and then I'm gonna press out. And as I press out, I'm gonna throw that punch, right? Just like we don't throw a punch with my elbow out here from the start, we don't bench with my elbow out here from the start. We bench with my elbow about 45 degrees, and then when I throw that punch, I'm internally rotating. So let's try that again. Step in here, running here. So your touch point, you can come down. The oh, touch oh, point oh. on the chest should be where your elbow is at a 45 degrees. So on rack, bring your arm down, 45 degrees away from the, uh, the torso. Bring it down, boom. See, this is actually over tuck. This is not 45. Mm. Bring it 45, boom, same thing there. His touch point will actually probably be up a little lower onto the chest or higher. Um, on the chest, nice touch point there. Now, what he's doing with the bar and he's doing with his arm is he's throwing it off his chest and punching out. So go slow, push back, and then he rotates the elbow out and punches out. I had a video a couple months ago about the J pattern. I go over this. Again, we're rotating out. Do a couple reps like that. 45 degrees away, and then punch out. Boom. This is gonna be a much stronger position. This, this right here is where the gold is, all right? Nice, one more. 45 degrees, throw it back and punch out. Perfect, all right. Now let's talk about a couple other things. <coughs> Earlier we talked about the thoracic arch and creating tension in the upper back. This arch right here is the most important part, right through here. But our, we also want to create, this is going to be the goal, but along with that we have our lordotic region. Okay? We're creating a global arch, so you're going to squeeze and throughout the entire back till your butt is on the, and with your butt on the pad I should say. Okay? Now you can rack the bar, but stay down. In order for my, to help create this arch, not only am I pulling the shoulders down, but I'm also going to be driving with my legs back. So put your hands there and brace yourself. Don't unrack the bar. But brace yourself so you can push against something. So, all right, let's see. Here. All right, so he creates that arch. You don't always have to step on the pad. Just bring it down. Butt down onto the pad. And now he's gonna do a quad extension. 
flex your, uh, your, your leg, like you're, you're, you're pushing, you're trying to slide the foot onto the ground, but because of the friction, the foot's not going anywhere. Creating tension in the quads. This is driving force from the ground into the glutes to help him create that arch, right? So the force he's generating here by extending forward is driving back into his body to help create that strong arch, all right? How does that feel? I feel tight. Feel tight? <laughs> yep. Nice. Then he would unrack the bar, 45 degrees angle as he goes down to his touch point and punching out. Boom. Let's see if we can get a little bit of weight on. All right, let's put these tools to use. Grip is in place. Proper wrist position creates that thoracic arch with his setup. Gets the leg drive, squeezing his quads. Gonna bring the elbows down to about 45 degrees. Drive it back and punch out at the top. Perfect. What do you think? No shoulder pain. Um, it felt a lot easier. You just got to get the muscle memory down, but it's a, it feels a lot less stress here. Where they can, where can people follow you? People follow me at Norali the Creator um, on Instagram and YouTube, or Instagram, TikTok. TikTok. Didn't make a YouTube yet. All right. Yeah. Till next time. Yep.